We've all seen pictures of facelifts gone wrong, but a good facelift can actually give you a natural and younger appearance by tightening your skin back to where it should be. Today we'll watch as Wanda undergoes this confidence boosting procedure here on The Younger You. I'm on top of the world and now I'm living And the good just gets better, keeps a giving Not even close to the end, it's just beginning Life is getting lighter while the days are getting brighter, yeah And it's a good, I won't even worry anymore Took all my care, still can kick them all out the door Go on and try, come and tell me what you're waiting for Move and keep them going till your life is overflowing, yeah Welcome to The Younger You. Today on the show we're talking about facelifts. This procedure can seem scary to some people, but it can also produce amazing results. Let's talk to the cosmetic surgeon that we'll see perform today's facelift procedure, Dr Dunkley. Hey Dr Dunkley, how are you? I'm well, how are you Troy? Fantastic. Now, we Good. all seem to think we know what a facelift is. There are so many out there now. What are there? Well, there's short scar facelifts, MAC lifts, vampire lifts, swift lifts, a traditional facelift, and then there's a few doctor's names attached to some of the facelifts as well. Non-surgical facelift compared to surgical facelift. Let's just clarify those two. Any facelift where they're going to make incisions and cut, that's considered a surgical facelift. The vampire lift is the one lift I can think of where it is not actually a surgical procedure but more of filler injections as well as plasma. Yes, because a lot of people call that a liquid facelift. Right. And that's what the public seem to think more about a non-surgical facelift, don't they? Yes. What are some of the best benefits on the face for a facelift? So your short scar facelifts are usually designed to clean up your jawline and maybe take a little extra skin out of the neck. Mm -hmm. And when you get into a more full or traditional facelift, you're looking at one that's going to benefit the cheeks as well as the jaw and more improvement through the neck. There's quite a bit of downtime when it comes to facelifts, isn't it? In order for you to go out and not have anyone know you've had something done, yeah, you're looking at a couple weeks at least. And several months before you see a full result or? I think the result peaks about four to six months out after okay. your surgery. Right. But you definitely look better at two months than you did at one month and four months than you did at two months. Many years ago, you, you know, all we saw on TV, Dr. Dunkley, was these skin tight facelifts and you always thought they were done on women who were in their 80s. But that's not the case anymore. No, there's a lot of different techniques used now. Traditionally, it was more of a skin-only facelift mm -hmm. where you pulled skin out, and it used to be more of a backwards vector, pulling towards the ear. And what we've discovered is to get a more natural look from the facelift, we need a more up and back vector. When is roughly the roundabout time that you would think of having a cosmetic facelift? I usually see patients in their mid-40s to 50s coming in at first, and yeah. then it just continues from there. Okay. When you have a facelift, okay, mm -hmm. what other procedures would you recommend to go along with that facelift when you're talking to one of your patients? The facelift tightens the skin only. We're removing excess skin and pulling that skin tight, but we're not doing anything to improve the quality of the skin. Ah. So with every facelift, I want to do at least a needling procedure, I call it, where yep. you're puncturing the skin with needles, mm. and then the skin responds by depositing collagen, thickening up. So I always do that with the facelift. And the other thing we've discovered is that the aging face deflates. We're losing a lot of volume. So I like to also graft fat at the same time I'm doing a facelift. Which you are known for because yeah, you've done an incredible done result. Before. Yeah. When you say you do the needling, is this all at the same time as the facelift? Yeah. So the same anesthetic? Yes, while they're still under the okay. anesthetic, we'll do the needling. And usually I'll do needling over the entire face and neck just because we want that improvement in the quality of the skin. And then sometimes we'll even do a mild chemical pill. And I asked you before we came on set, you said something about muscle reassignment on the face. What do you mean by that? You've got a muscle called the platysma that runs from your jaw down to your clavicle. Uh -huh. That muscle's continuous with the muscle well, I'm just going to use the abbreviation. It's called the SMAS, S-M-A-S, because it stands yeah. for a big, long, nonsensical okay. word. But it goes up into the face, and we'll actually take that muscle and pull it back so that we're tightening the muscle as well as the skin layer. You actually did this procedure on Wanda, mm -hmm. which we're going to see in segment two coming up after the break. What type of facelift did you do on her? It's a traditional facelift, okay. a full traditional facelift, where we did skin removal, and then we did that SMAS muscle tightening as well. With Wanda's main concern regarding her facelift, was it because she had bad damaged skin? It was loose skin and usually that loose skin starts to show up as what we would call a gel, that little bulge that forms okay. right here in front of your chin. Major skin damage? 
she definitely had some skin damage. Okay. Well, that's great that we can actually segue into our next topic about what you can do to prevent your skin from aging. Can you protect it? The best way to avoid the symptoms of aging skin is to protect yourself from the sun. Let's take a look at what you can do to shield your skin. Most of the skin changes associated with age are due to one cause, and that's sun damage. The first thing you need to do to prevent sun damage is to stop sunbathing. Any suntan means that skin damage has occurred. There are lots of products out there that can give you a glowing tan without exposing your skin to harmful UV rays. Other ways to avoid sun damage include wearing large brimmed hats and of course wearing that sunscreen. Slip slop slap people, I always think it's best to use a product with at least SPF 15 in it or greater. Coming up after the break, we'll be talking to Dr. Dunkley a little more, then heading into his office to watch him perform Wanda's facelift procedure. The following footage contains actual surgical procedures. It may be too graphic for some viewers. We just talked about sun damage. What are some of the other factors that can cause our skin to sag, not age? Some of the things we just can't help, and unfortunately we inherit some things that we don't want from our parents. Some people just don't get as good of skin, and if they lose elasticity in their skin or elastin fibers, their skin can age faster than somebody else. Regarding this particular type of facelift, what are the risks associated with that? Well, there's common risks. Okay. Pain, bleeding, infection, bruising, swelling, things like that. But when it comes to risks and actually things that we worry about with the facelift, there's only a couple things. One very important thing is there's a nerve that comes out in front of the ear, spreads out like a fan, and it's responsible for all the movement that we have in our face. We watch for it, but sometimes a little branch of that can be damaged. What and happens if that is damaged? Well, hopefully you haven't cut the nerve. You've yeah. just irritated it and it comes back. And that's most often the case. Okay. When patients come into you, Dr. Dunkley, and they say, I've seen these pictures, I've seen these stars, I've talked about this type of facelift with my girlfriends. What are the steps that you go through talking to them? Talk us through, I walk in, what happens? Well, if you're interested in a facelift, I usually go over the basics of a facelift. A facelift is designed to help improve the face, basically from the eyes down. Mm -hmm. The facelift is definitely the best procedure for tightening up the neck as well. Then I'll tell them where the scars are located. They're gonna be around the sideburn if we're doing a full facelift, yes. in front of the ear, behind the ear, and back into the hairline. You said something interesting just then. You said from the eyes down. Is not a facelift from the eyes up as well? No, more a brow lift addresses things oh, gotcha. above the eyes. Okay, so that, see, I already thought that it was a full facelift, it was pulling it all the way back. Do you do the brow lift at the same time if you needed that done? You certainly can. We'll do brow lifts. We'll also do eyelid surgery at the same time as facelift. Dr. Dunkley, sitting here listening to you, I know that surgery has come so far. You know, cosmetic surgeons have become more advanced with the techniques that you're doing. Do the patients still have the same expectations? For the most part, they do. Mm. And they're pretty realistic about what they expect to get. But occasionally they'll bring in a picture and say this is what I want to look like afterwards and if that happens I usually try and tone things down and say okay that's, that's not going to happen. Say hold on back. What I would prefer to have you do is bring in a picture of you 10 years ago and that's probably what we can achieve. After talking to Dr Dunkley I think it's time we check in with Wanda to find out why she wanted this procedure. My name is Wanda and I'll be 55 tomorrow. I feel young but unfortunately, the older we get, then things start to fall, and so I want to fix that. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm okay, thank you. Good. A little nervous? A little nervous. A little <laughs> That's anxious. normal. If you remember when we talked about the facelift, you'll have a little incision right here, so we can do a little bit of liposuction and then just repair these muscles right here. All right, so lift up. I'm going to put a little mark right here underneath your chin. Remember that platysma muscle comes from your jaw down to your clavicle and tends to separate in the midline and that's what's responsible for those bands that we tend to get. So, And then of course the incision kind of in front of the sideburn. So in front of the sideburn, down the ear, we're going to go behind this part to break the incision up and then behind the ear and back into the hair. That incision behind the ear allows me to really pull the excess neck skin up and get that. And then of course the ones in front of the ear allow me to pull 
soften this part up. The gels? Mm-hmm, so we get rid of these jowls and really soften up the smile line there around the mouth. I have uh, several sisters that are jealous. Says it's wonderful, just do it, and I'm gonna be so excited and happy with the results, so I think it's gonna be good. First of all, let's get a little tumescence into the neck. Then we'll do a little bit of lipo, and then we'll start doing our platysmoplasty where we put the muscles together. The vaser disrupts the bonds between the fat cells, makes the fat easier to come out. Helps free up the skin, gives me a little bit of better skin tightening. And now that we've done the vaser, we're gonna do a little bit of liposuction. But honestly, in the neck, there's never a lot of fat. And we're just freeing up the uh, muscle edges that run here where I've marked. Once we get those muscle edges freed up, then we're gonna start working on sewing them back together in the middle. I have all this saggy skin that um, I expect to be tight, gone. I expect to be beautiful and tight when I get up. Well, once again, we got the top of the platysma muscles together, and now I'm just gonna work my way down. This one's a little bit tough because you're working down in a little hole. But I think it gives them a nice look. Isn't that really nice, sharp under neck that everybody wants? We finished preparing our platysma muscle in the midline, which should give us a really nice, straight cervical mental angle. That'll look really nice. Coming up after the break, we'll see the conclusion of Wanda's facelift procedure. Then she'll be joining us in the studio so we can check out her final results. Like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter for updates on the show and join the Younger You conversation. Be sure to check out the Younger You website to watch full episodes of the show. Stay up to date on the Younger You challenge and get useful tips and tricks to help you achieve the Younger You. The following footage contains actual surgical procedures. It may be too graphic for some viewers. So we've done our vaser to add a little energy and help with our dissection. Now I'm going to just start doing our incision around her hairline here. I always bevel that. Bevel meaning take it on an angle and go through just a little bit of the hair so that when we put things back together we can hopefully do it in such a way that the hair will grow back up through that incision and make it even less noticeable. We're on the tragus right now. We're going along the back side of that because it makes this incision a little less visible and breaks it up. I, I've had a few things done. You know, I've had some fillers done and, and peels, and uh, you, you're always doing research on new things. And um, I came out and spoke with Dr. Dunkley, and we talked about the facelift. And it just all sounded great to me. So I went home and discussed it with my family and decided this was what I wanted to do. This is what I was going to do. Now we're in our plane. We've got everything started. We can move a little bit faster with our dissection. We want to make sure we get our dissection right up to that nasal labial fold so we can really pull that out nicely. Now that we've freed up everything here all the way around, superficial muscle layer called the superficial muscular aponeurotic system or SMAS. We're going to use that to pull on the platysma and secure it back to the mastoid. And that helps get that neck that nice tight cervical mental angle. There's a nerve in here that we're watching for. A what? Great auricular nerve. If we happen to cut that, then the earlobe stays numb forever. We want to stay away from that one if we can help it. All right, so we're going to get this nice firm fascia here over the mastoid. Get right down in the periosteum, and then we're going to take this and get our pull. If you can see, when we pull that muscle up, it just tightens that up right through there. And that's our plan, just to tighten that muscle right up, bunch it up a little bit on her cheek, give her a little bit more cheekbone. I think the first thing is um, you need to go and talk with the surgeon and see, you know, what options you have. Uh, there's some things that's not so dramatic as what I'm going to do. Um, they're, they're the first person, I think, that 
helps you, advises you. There's a lot of other surgeries a lot worse, so, you know, I think that's the first thing you should do. So we've done two layers. First the layer was the muscle tightening. So we did muscle tightening, pulling everything this way. Make sure we get a nice smooth jowl right here. And then also to pull the neck up tight. So we did a tightening here. Basically a football shape of the muscle brought that together. Back here, we just cut the muscle along the border here, pulled it back and reattached it to tighten the neck up. And see, this is where this was before. We're pulling all the way out up to this point. So we're getting rid of about an inch worth of skin at least right there. We don't want to create a step back here, so we make sure we get the hairline put right together. So we've got our tension sutures, which are up here at the top in front of the ear and at the top behind the ear. And now we just trim the rest of the skin out so it just lies gently against all the incisions. We don't want tension under on any of the other cuts because that makes it uh, more likely to pull, which we don't want, and widen out. We don't want this incision too low so that the cure lobe is attached like that or it looks odd. We want that to still have a curve and come up. I'm single. Uh, I'm ready to get out there, you know. Um, for the last few years, it's kind of uh, been about everybody else, but this year, it's gonna be all about me, so. Nothing's a secret anymore, you know. People are proud to say they've had these things done. Okay, we're, we're gonna put just a couple of interrupted stitches in to just hold things kind of close to where we want them, all the little key points together. And then we're gonna put a running stitch that'll go all the way around it to do the final closure. So in the hairline, since it's so hard to tell sutures from hair, we usually staple this area. It's easier for the patient to get them out, easier for us to get them out. And then we suture everything where there's no hair. So it's looking down from the top now, you can see what a difference we have in the contour. This one's much narrower and this one's still loose and redundant. We're gonna finish sewing this side up, skin-wise. And then we're gonna go back to uh, start on the other side. Coming up after the break, Wanda will be joining Dr. Dunkley and myself in the studio to check out her amazing results. Like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter for updates on the show and join the Younger You conversation. Be sure to check out the Younger You website to watch full episodes of the show. Stay up to date on the Younger You challenge and get useful tips and tricks to help you achieve the Younger You. Welcome back. Let me introduce you to Wanda, who's had the face of... Hey, Wanda, how are you? I'm great. How are you? Fantastic. Well, before the break, we've all seen you having the procedure done. I just want to remind everyone what your before shots looked like. Dr. Dunkley, when you look at these before shots, what do you see? I see some loose skin, especially gathering um, right around the corners of the mouth. And then I see the angle on the neck being almost straight from the chin down and not having a nice crisp angle there. Why did you decide to do this type of facelift on Wanda? Well, with the traditional or full scar facelift, we can get the most tightening in the neck, ah. which is where she was having some issues, okay. as well as the most benefit in the cheek. Wanda, when you see those before shots, like, what was going through your mind when you saw that? I thought, oh my gosh, how horrible. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it was bad, but I didn't realize how bad it was. You told me you were 55. I am. Did you think when you saw those shots that it made you look older? Yeah, a lot older, probably 10 years older. Really? I That's how you so. felt? I did. So what did you see when you looked in the mirror most mornings? That loose hanging skin and then the neck. The neck really shows your age, yeah, I, I believe. I think that's a huge factor, don't you agree? Oh, it really does. What did your family think when you said, I'm gonna do this? They thought I was crazy. Did they? <laughs> they did. When you were doing Wanda's facelift, did you do any injectables? Not injectables as in fillers, traditional okay. fillers, but we did put some fat in put a little fat back in through here. Okay, when he told you he was going to do that, did you know that was possible? No, I didn't. What went through your mind when he said, I'm gonna suck a bit out here and shove it up there? Yeah, you know, I know they put fat 
in the rear end, but not in the face, you ah. know? And I thought, oh my gosh, what's it gonna do to my face, you know? Is it gonna look weird? Is it gonna be puffy? Is it, you know? Fat grafting is sometimes a hard sell. People always think they wanna get rid of fat, but we really need it in some places. Well, I actually think it's one of the, the best things to have done for also prevention for mm -hmm. aging down the track as well. Are you sorry you didn't do this 10 years ago? You know, 10 years ago, I looked pretty good because now I look like I did 10 years ago. Okay. You know, I probably started getting a few fillers 10 years ago. So you, you've had some fillers, you've had I a little have. bit of Botox, you knew yeah. there was a little bit happening. What other skin services did you do to help maintain you over the years? You know, I've had some chemical pills, lotions, yeah. creams. I've stayed out of the sun only probably the last few years, five years. Well, I have to say, you look really natural. I do, great. I love that you've still got a few little lines around yeah. the eye. She doesn't look overdone, Dr. Dunkley, at all. No, well, we really don't want a windblown look, so yeah. oh, we that's want it to look natural. Talk to me about the recovery. That's a little rough. After the first few days, you know, though I was up and, and uh, out and about, I wasn't outside, of course. How long before you actually went back to work? I was only off work two weeks. Really? Yeah. Bruising was gone or you just had a little wasn't, bit of tinge? Yeah, a little, little bruising still. Covered. covered with makeup, mm -hmm. yeah, okay. and you can go out and about. Wanda, when you see your after shots now, when you face on, what do you see when you see that? I love my face, I love my neck. You know, my muscles aren't spread apart that I could see before. Dr. Dunkley, what is the difference when you see both side by side? The biggest change I see is we've removed some of this weight from the cheek or jowl. We don't see as many smile lines. We have a cleaner border here along the jaw. Definitely jawline is what I can see. And when we're looking at the side on, all I see is the before shots of, of like what we call a, a turkey neck. Right. Yeah? Right. So how much skin did you actually remove? Well, there's two points where you're taking out the most skin. And that's uh, in front of the ear and behind the ear. And that's where you're taking up the extra neck skin this direction and the extra face skin in this direction. Oh. And I would say we took out an inch, inch and a quarter of skin up at that point. Above that part. So it is definitely up above the ear where you're actually pulling it all up. Yes, and the incision line will lay right in front of the ear. Most of us uh, surgeons will go behind this tragus right here just to break the incision up so you don't see it all the way down. Yeah. And then it comes out here and goes around behind the ear. Yeah. I think you look amazing. Your Thank friends you. and everyone out there said, you are crazy, you don't need a face. Right. What do you say to them now? They absolutely love it. Really? They just love it. And they keep telling me every day, I think it gets better and better. Well, I think it does too. And yeah. I think Dr. Dunkley was correct by saying up to six months before right. you see the full result. What after that six months, Dr. Dunkley, can Wanda do just for a little bit of a top up if she feels like it. So fillers are definitely a good idea. Uh -huh. Botox. Skin resurfacing, you were talking about needling. Needling, That's absolutely. Chemical pills, I mean, yeah. there's, there's a lot of things you can do. Wanda, thank do you too. so much. I thank feel you. very brave thank showing you. everyone that you can do this no matter what age. And if everyone thought you were crazy, well, guess what? You're the one looking stunning. Thank you. I thank appreciate you so it. Much, thank Dr. you. Dunkley. Of course, you're, you're gorgeous. Yeah, Part of being younger, you is putting your best foot forward every day. If you felt like a facelift is for you, that is your choice. You make the right decisions, you do the research. For more information about the show, please visit our website at theyoungeryou.tv, and I'll see you next week. Next week on The Younger You, we're checking back in with our Younger You Challenge contestants. Have you been watching what they've been up to? Have you followed the journey? The Younger You set provided by Madison McCord Interiors. <laughs>